So I've made a pledge for this particular book of season that I won't be reviewing any books for longer than 10 minutes. We're only going to have short reviews for this book of season because I do not care. No, I don't. So in the interest of not wasting time, we're going to get into the first book that I read, which I read before the long list came out because it got leaked, and that is Rita Bullwinkle's Headshot. Headshot is a book about uh, young female boxers. Uh, the book is split between about six or seven fights, and as the fights go on, we enter these girls' heads and we see uh, all of their sort of self rational Rationalizing and uh, internalization of things and their bloodlust, and we see all of that in a very uh, invasive, quite ironic uh, prose. On the whole, I quite liked this book. Um, I think the main thing I liked about the book the most was the structure of it. I like that the action is constantly offset by time jumps or jumps into the characters' heads. Um, and I like that the only plot that this book has is through the structure of the competition that the girls are competing in. So other than that, other than the linearity of the competition and this girl has won, so she'll verse another girl later in the book, that's the only sense of plot that we have. And that means that the book does not try to bother itself with engaging with sort of traditional plot beats, uh, characters don't grow, there isn't really a narrative. All we get in the book is these sort of snapshots of fights um, accompanied by these fist flurries of scene change and thoughts from these characters. It helps kind of put the reader in the head of everything they're doing is about the fight, everything they're doing is about winning and fighting and boxing, and it means that, as I said, the lack of a real plot, the lack of characters that redeem themselves or grow Row means that the book is able to focus on that kind of main point better and in a more sort of uh, visceral way. The book emphasizes the sociopathy that uh, forces the characters to reduce each other in their eyes and also to kind of uh, self-rationalize. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting kind of moments where these girls are doing specific psychological things. I also love the flash forwards in the book where we see how these characters will grow old and die and either be fulfilled or not. And it makes everything feel really nihilistic and futile and I quite like that. It would be like cutting forward in the movie Challenges to see all of the characters struggling with injury and depression and so on. And it would just make the tennis fight at the middle feel so much more kind of pointless and sad and I like that the book does that. It just makes everything feel really grim. The book never lets itself get stuck into just describing the fighting inside the book, which would get very old very quickly, and the time jumps is a way that the book kind of uh, accomplishes that. Uh, like, for example, the fight between Iggy and Izzy. I don't think there's any mention of fighting in that chapter, or if there is, it's very minimal, because it's all about these characters uh, flashbacking and thinking about their relationships with each other, um, and the fighting is kind of reduced to the periphery, at least in that story. A lot of humour in the book comes from ironic statements about sisterhood and the lateral way that women connect. Uh, one quote that I had was, if the Daughters of America tournament bracket was flipped counterclockwise on its side, it would look like a family tree, and Andy, by way of marriage or blood, would be Kate's sister. So that's kind of a very, uh, sort of, uh, sarcastic, nihilistic view of the relationships between these young girls, how they're all just trying to fucking kill each other. But I think maybe the nihilism of the book was leaving me looking for something perhaps broader or perhaps more of a specific point to offset that nihilism, because the book really does boil down into these women want to kill each other, everyone's an animal, and especially the ending of the book, which I'll talk about in a sec, the ending really gave me that impression. The book is full of lots of really sort of keen, specific psychological insights into characters. Uh, there's one, I think, which character was it? Kate Heffer, yes. Here's a quote from Kate Heffer where she says, It is this ability of Kate's to rewrite the reality of her own desires, that will allow her to turn every narrative of her life into a self-fulfilling truth. She is in this way able to perceive and remember only those events that fit with her current perception of the world around her. And I think that that's a really great specific psychological insight that I think we all do to a lesser extent, and seeing it uh, rationalized and put to paper in this way is quite good. But I also think that doing that doesn't create much of a point in itself, and I feel like on the whole all the book is saying is uh, these women are reducing themselves in each other's eyes, these women are 
fighting each other and killing each other and that's kind of human instinct. Just that boxing brings out a lot of negativity in people. I don't think that in itself is saying a lot about the human condition by pairing these psychological insights to just people fighting. I don't, I don't know if that's quite enough for me. It might also be the structure of the book where each character is only given so much time to establish themselves as kind of a hotbed of self-delusion and narcissism. As I said, the book doesn't let itself get stuck into describing the fighting, but it does have a very repetitive structure, and when, whenever the author would try to attempt to show that the stories are different, uh, I was rolling my eyes a little bit about how much she was showing her hand in doing that. For example, I did roll my eyes into how every story had to start in totally different ways, and that got more extreme as the book went on, when the author was clearly looking for something unrelated to start the story with before it connected into the main story, so she'd begin by talking about one of the judges, or she'd begin by talking about, I don't know, the food that they're eating or some shit, and I knew that the only reason she was doing that was to make the repetitive structure a little smoother and make it not feel like all the stories are the same, but I knew that that was the only reason the book was doing that, and I was a little bit like, ah. Uh, I don't know, like, it's it's just a little forced. I also felt like the author was pushing for me to tell the characters apart by giving them quirks, and I'm, I'm never really a big fan of that, although I do think that within each individual story you can kind of get enough of individuality between the two. If it were a short story collection and it was like one of these stories was in a broader short story collection that wasn't about boxing, it would be more memorable than it is in a book that's all about boxing and all about these matches, you know what I mean? Like, the stories don't stand out from each other. I feel a lot more comfortable calling Headshot a book about boxing than I do calling Western Lane a book about squash, because if you change the sport in Western Lane, it wouldn't change anything of what the book is doing. Um, whereas, I would say this is about boxing, and it's about fighting, and it's about the way the sport instills a mindset in you, and I think that no matter how uh, psychologically specific the author can get, and how much she jumps around and spreads out her kind of net, I never got away from that being the really the only point that the book is trying to make. I also really did not like the ending where the author makes these really grand and ridiculous statements about human nature and how we all fight. It goes ahead into the future when we've colonized other planets and I was like, no, 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 this is too far, this is too silly. I like the nihilism of the book quite a lot, it's quite short, I think there's lots of uh, funny moments in the book, but I do feel it's a little repetitive and it becomes a little single-minded and the stories didn't stand stand out from each other, they all kind of repeated the same message that I didn't think was particularly meaty. Um, but I like the book overall, I thought it was pretty good, it's just not something I'd write home about. Um, and yeah, this book is not even close to the worst book ever longlisted for the booker. It's not even the worst book longlisted for this year's booker. I'll be talking about the book Held later on, but holy shit that book was bad. So overall, I like you Headshot, I'm a fan of you and I'll support you in the stands. Thank you so much for watching, uh, please feel free to subscribe if you want, I'll be making these reviews shorter. That's that's probably more appealing, and I also don't necessarily want to uh, wax lyrical on every single book that I read from the long list. So, God bless, thank you, bye!